guys, long time no see. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a reading vlog today, which is so weird. And I'm actually not doing it today. It's actually like, uh, it's 10 o'clock at night on a Thursday. And I'm going to be completely honest, this was going to be like a week-long reading vlog, but I procrastinated to the point where I hated the idea of doing it. So now it's just a 24-hour readathon. Whether I actually stay awake in those 24 hours, I don't know. I'm actually trying to get my sleep schedule back in order while doing this readathon. So reading, th read can I call it a readathon? No, not really. Uh, I actually, I'm only planning on reading one book throughout the day. If I read more, you know, that's just a plus. But I just want to finish... Actually, I, I want to start and finish The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This is the third book in the Truly Devious series. I'm not sure if the Truly Devious is only the first three books and they don't consider the, they consider the other two like add-ons or not. Um, it doesn't really say on the cover of the fourth book if it does or not. Yeah, it says praise for the Truly Devious trilogy. So I'm not exactly sure if this is like a trilogy with like two sequels or what it is. I'm confused, but oh well. I really loved the Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stair. I will admit to loving The Vanishing Stair just a little bit more than Truly Devious, mostly because we got a lot of um, information and loose ends were tied up pretty nicely in it. So I'm really excited to go into The Hand on the Wall. And I will be listening to the audiobook. I actually have plans to do some things tomorrow. I got to drive all the way to Frankfurt. I'll take you guys with me for that. And I have the audiobook. So I'll be listening to that for the, I don't know, three or four hours that I'm gone from home. And if I just so happen to finish this book, I will be hopping in to The Box in the Woods. Maybe not right away. Now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like I should put some time between these two books because I have issues when I read books back to back. They like, in this in the same series, they like blend together and I don't know when one starts and one stops. That wasn't really a problem with the first two books, but I don't want to make it a problem. So after I read this, I may actually just pick up some manga or something. I have lots of manga on my shelf that I need to read. On one hand, I'm glad I didn't film my experience reading the first two books because I made a lot of assumptions and saw a lot of things woven into the storyline, for the first book at least, that didn't come into play until the second book and it was like, I was jumping the gun really far ahead and I wish I had done it for The Vanishing Stare. It's like, that's when the idea of vlogging my experience for this book came into play. I was like halfway through The Vanishing Stare. I was like, I'm really, really enjoying this book. I wish I had more than just physical notes that I had taken while reading to, you know, look back on of the reading of this book since I enjoyed it so much. So that's kind of why I'm doing a vlog for this one so that I can get my thoughts and hopefully not look like a complete idiot when I try to solve the mystery of who's behind the current case. That's something I didn't say. I don't know if you guys have read Truly Devious, but there's two cases going on at the same time, one in the 1930s and one in present day, and I'm honestly more invested in the past one just because it's easier to have, it's, there's so much evidence in it. So it was easier to work out who was behind everything, even though there was a twist. So the person who was behind everything wasn't actually the person behind everything. And it was weird, but a good weird. And the current circumstances uh, are going on. I'm not sure if it was it's a case or accidents. I feel like there's too many accidents for it to truly be accidents. So, so I'm more invested in the 1930s case than I am in the present case, but I'm actually surprised I'm so okay with jumping from past case to future case and having us see the events of the past while solving it in the future. And it, I don't know, it's just a nice twist on things and this series makes me want to read more mystery books. So if you guys have any good YA mystery recommendations, please leave them in the comments below because I need them in my life. So yeah, that's it for this intro. I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. I have finished my Bible study for the day and I'm ready to head out, got everything together. Kai is 
over there guarding my stuff and will probably go crazy when he realizes that I'm leaving. But it's 11 a.m. I have at least an hour drive to Frankfurt and I'm not looking forward to that. But I hope I get a lot of audiobook done. I'm also not sure exactly how much vlogging I'm going to do on this little trip because I honestly just want to get everything that I need to get done, done and then get back home because I am a real introvert, a real homebody and I hate leaving the house, hate interacting with people a lot. Or I shouldn't say hate, it just it gives me a lot of anxiety and it honestly just makes me feel uncomfortable. So. I just prefer to stay home and not have to deal with those things. So I'm going to try to vlog like little bits and pieces of where I go and what I do today, but honestly I don't plan on doing much. My main objectives today are basically just to go to Walmart, to get some groceries, and then get Chinese food. Because fun fact, this Chinese food in Frankfurt is the closest Chinese food place to me. Actually I think it's the same distance if I go to Florence, but it's an hour either way <laughs> my driving. so. I want Chinese food and so do my mom so I'm going to get Chinese food and I'm gonna go grocery shopping at the Walmart in Frankfurt while I get the Chinese food because it's no sense making two trips and I may stop at Ollie's to see if they have any decent books I will decide that when I get up there and see how crowded it is so bye for now has been acquired. Now it's time to go get groceries at one of my least favorite stores, Walmart. Um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to, why is it zoomed in so much? Oh my gosh, zoom out. What is going on? That's so much better. I don't know what just happened. Um, yeah, I forgot that I also need to pick up something for my stepdad to eat, so I'm probably going to end up going to Wendy's after this, and I'm not going to enjoy that because the parking lot of drive through whatever you want to call it, of Wendy's is horrifyingly bad. Most fast food restaurants have horrifyingly bad drive throughs up in Frankfurt. I don't know why. Can't explain it. So I'm going to go in here and get groceries, and then, you know what? I may just stop at McDonald's in my hometown. I really hate McDonald's, but at the same time, I don't want to go through the hell that is Wendy's. So I think that's a better option. I don't think he really cares either way. Regardless, wish me luck. I'm going to need it. <laughs> Hello everyone. I am back home. I'm changed. We brought the groceries in. I don't know if you can see him, but Kai's here and I had to chase him around because he got out of the house when he knows he's not supposed to leave the house without a leash on. Yeah, so yeah, that was fun. He got a nice little whooping for it because he wouldn't come to me when I hollered for him. So I spent, ooh, hmm, frustrating. He minds very well until he gets outside. And then it's like, you do not exist. But yeah, I am very to eat a lot more Chinese food than I should eat. I haven't ate today. I had a french fry out of the Wendy's bag that I ended up stopping at Wendy's to get my stepdad food. And I ate one of his fries. So yeah, there's that. Um, and I reached chapter 7. I'm actually a little bit into chapter 7 of The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson and it's good but nothing's happened so far and I'm like no, at least as far as I know, not many key, pa key pieces of the cases have come up. I think the 1930s case we've gotten a handful of decent information and for the current case that's going on we haven't really delved into really anything. I think we're about to though, so that's really interesting. I, I can't wait for that. Um, I bought a lot of books today, but I will haul those later after I get done eating because I'm starving. So yeah, I'm gonna go stuff my face. All right, I believe I told you guys that I had gotten a lot of books and that I would do like a haul. And I started to do that as I bought the books, but I was like, no, I'll just do it all at once because I, I went way too many places where they had books. So I got three bags of books here. Um, the first two bags are from Ollie's. If you guys don't know what Ollie's is, I'm not sure if it's just a store that's in Kentucky, but they literally have everything except groceries. Actually, the one in Frankfurt had groceries. The one in Florence that I usually go to doesn't. If it does, it's it's been a while since I've been there, so if it does now, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. 
but the one in Frankfurt had groceries. But anyways, they have everything, and they have really cheap books. I got like, I think six or seven books for like $19, so yeah, I'm going to share them with you. First thing isn't actually a book, it's this BTS K-Pop Kings, and it's a fan guide that I, I don't need because, in all honesty, I really like BTS, I really like their music, but I'm not, like, obsessive with them. I don't actually even know which member is which. I know their names, but I don't know which one is which. Is that bad of me? It's just, my, I have a friend who's really a big fan of them. So, I hear their names and see their names a lot, but, like, I personally just don't know all, like, I can't match the name with the face because, I don't actually even watch the music videos, I just listen to the music, which I kind of need to fix that. These next two books I got on a whim, and I'm missing the first one apparently, but this is Marvel's Avengers Age of Ultron and Captain America Civil War. These are actual, you know, books to read, and I don't think Spider-Man is in them, which is a big sad, because, you know, I expect him at least in Civil War, but I don't think he's in it. But then I don't know if these are based off the comic books or if they're based off the movies and which is Midnight Beauties by Megan Shepard and this is I think the sequel to Grim Lovelies yes yeah, the sequel to Grim Lovelies uh this first one I have is Kingsbane which is the second book to the Furyborn series actually oh it's a trilogy so there's another book to this that I'm not sure if it's out or not I actually don't know if I have Furyborn. I wasn't 100% sure when I picked this book up, and I'm not sure now. I'd have to actually go through my books and look. I'm just going to tell you right now, all of these books are either 2 or $3. I never paid over $3 for any of these books. So this was $3. That Blood Leaf by Crystal Smith. I don't know if this is a sequel, a standalone, or if it has a sequel. I just know that I had recently seen this in a couple of reading vlogs that I watched, so I decided to just go ahead and pick it up. Because The last book I got from Ollie's was All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Seawater. I know absolutely nothing about this book. I picked it up purely because I read, you know, Maggie Seawater before, and I, you know, the only other series I actually have by Maggie Seawater besides The Raven Boys is the sequel spinoff series that takes place in, or goes, it follows Ronan, and I think Alec, but mostly Ronan. That's the only other series of hers I have, so I decided to pick up all the Crooked Saints. There's only like a couple copies on the shelf, so I'm actually really lucky that last, but not least, is what I got from Walmart. I actually got a couple of movies too, which I got Ant-Man. I very watched and loved Ant-Man. Uh, the next thing I got was the Uncharted movie that just came out. I'm not sure how long this has been out, but I saw it at Walmart and I was so excited because... I love these games and I really want to see what they do with the movie. Then I got The Song of Achilles and Circe's by Madeline Miller. I've heard so many great things about these books and I really do enjoy learning more about Greek mythology. So I was like, these books are relatively cheap and by relatively cheap I mean they were still like $9 a piece. I'm going to grab them. I'm not sure if you need to read The Song of Achilles first. Or you can just, they're both standalones, but I'll look that up later when I actually decide to read them. And last but not least, I got the Attack on Titan Omnibus uh, manga. It's actually volumes 4 through 5. This is like $20, but I haven't been able to get my hands on any of the manga so far. So when I saw this, I was like, yes, I, I need this in my life. I've watched all of Attack on Titan except for the final season part two because I was waiting for it to finish but then we realized that there's a part three to this series so now I'm just going to hold off because completely honest I did not like the first part of the final season. It was dull in my mind. There was a, It started out dull. It had some good action and fights and everything but we don't know everything that's going on in Aaron's head so I personally just... I don't like it. <sighs> Give me seasons one and two back and pull an Uno reverse on season four. So do I have room for this? No. Do I intend to read this anytime soon? Also no, because this is volumes four through six. 
and I and just because I know what's going to happen doesn't mean I'm not going to read them in order. So I hope I can find more bind up volumes like this. I really love bind up volumes of manga because I don't have to worry about cracking the spine. I can just I can just hold this open and it's just it's fine. Okay, so these are all of the books that I got today. I got quite a few. Actually, yeah, got quite a few books. Yeah, there we go. Now comes the fun project of finding room to put them on my shelves after I just reorganized my shelves. I'm not gonna. That's not gonna be fun. Uh, reading updates since the last time I haven't read anything because I sat here, I ate, and I watched YouTube videos. And I'm probably going to watch one more YouTube video before I start back in it. So I'm still in chapter 7, which is like 89 pages into it. A little bit more than that because I don't know exactly where I am in in chapter 7. Uh, but now that I'm home, I am free to take notes how I want. Sadly, I can't do this while driving, so I can take my notes and I can just, you know, fully immerse myself in the world without having to divide my attention to other places. And I will admit to having to rewind the audiobook several times because I kept getting distracted. And I should be, I should be saying that the book was distracting me because I was driving, but <laughs> it was just really distracting. And I, I was kind of getting a little bit frustrated and I wanted to just listen to music, but then I was like, no, this is a reading blog. You have to read. You have to get this book read because I have to return the audiobook to my library. on page 140 of the hand on the wall and quite a few things have happened uh the one thing that happened is we learned a gigantic secret about alice's parentage is that the right word we learned something about her parents and that something is a very i'm trying not to spoil anything because i want people to be able to watch this and not be spoiled but we learned something about her parents and it's it's a secret within a secret and it's weird and I don't like it and it's so messy especially it's oh I, I really can't spoil anything it, it's considering everything that's happened and who's behind everything it is just a very messy thing to deal with and I'm not sure how my feelings are on that yet um, the second thing I wanted to not really talk talk about but just mention is uh, David just got back and we're, we're going into this whole political thing on how to basically take someone down, reveal things about them so that they don't become president. David's, you, you, oh, that's spoiling the first book, actually. Now, David wants to take down the senator who's running for president. And this senator happens to have Stevie's, our main character's parents, in his back pocket. They're, they're basically those hive mind people that just can't think for themselves, honestly. It's, it's what it feels like. But anyways, he wants all of them to help him take down this senator, and if only it was this easy to take down 
a sh person that you know is going to be a shitty president because they're a shitty person. Whether they've been a senator or whether they work in some other form of government, you know the person's shitty and either because of fixed votes or because there's just way too many idiots in the world, that person is going to become president. This has happened multiple times. I'm not targeting one president and I mean, I, I have one in mind, but I'm not going to say who it is because I don't, I don't want this to get into a political conversation. The only other thing I really want to briefly mention is the fact that Nate is my favorite character. I love him on so many levels. Him and Stevie's dry humor just gives me just a little bit more life. <laughs> I had the intentions of finishing this book, but it's not going to happen. And tomorrow is a Bible study day. Me and my mom, my sister-in-law, and my sister-in-law's kids all get together and we we either like have like a progressive study where we study one topic over a series of weeks or we have just simple short topics that we have and we change them every week. We've actually started a jar of topics and I'm not sure if that's what we're going to get on tomorrow or not or if my mom's already chosen a topic. That will take up probably half the day tomorrow so if I can at least get half of this book read tonight then I should be able to finish it tomorrow. But I know I'm not finishing it tonight because I'm already so exhausted from like going on five hours of sleep and having to travel so much. I spent two hours on the road just to and from Frankfurt and it was probably like another 30 minutes on the road going between stores. So I'm tired, <laughs> but I'm chugging along and I don't like caffeine. Actually, I can't drink caffeine because it affects my anxiety so bad it causes an anxiety attack and in the instances it doesn't, that's just regular coffee. When I drink G Fuel, it causes sensory overload. Don't ask me how it causes sensory overload, but it literally feels like every little noise and smell and temperature change just causes massive amounts of anxiety to just pile up. But yeah, that's the only update for now. I got Kai sleeping over here, all bundled up and being all cute. I'm, yeah, I'm at least going to get halfway through this book. There's, there's, no, there's no way. There's no way I don't get halfway through this book. But I'm definitely not finishing it. <laughs> so I have officially made it past halfway. I am exactly 10 pages past the halfway point. And I got to be completely honest, the drama that's going on between Stevie and David and their relationship, I am not altogether sure whose side I'm on because she has a point. He's lied to her like lots of times and she had the intentions of, you know, telling him the truth, even though she never, you know, told him that she was going to tell him the truth the entire time before all that stuff went down. In all honesty, that's a, that's a big thing that you need to tell him. It's like, Hey, I was going to tell you the truth. It's just like, Hey, we also found a dead body. So couldn't really tell you at that point in time. Uh, so I feel like she should have told him that. And he may be a little bit more receptive to you no, know, not hating her guts right now. So I don't know. He has a right to be pissed, but at the same time, she has a right to be pissed as well. And she, he's also doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes and just not telling anybody the reasoning. I mean, we know the reasoning now, but even with this reasoning, there's only so many things you should do to make yourself look completely insane. He kind of crossed the... Well, actually, maybe he didn't cross a few lines. I mean, he's an eccentric rich kid, so I don't know. I really don't know whose side I'm on because they're both horrible and what they did to each other was horrible. But at the same time, it's not something that a little communication wouldn't solve. And considering everything that is going on, not just with the murders, but with the political side of everything, you would think, you know, th a little bit more important things going on besides teenage drama and love and all of that. It's like, get your acts together. Figure it out later. Right now, just stop being assholes to each other. Just stop.